Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. My name is Kevin and this is my wife Sarah. Well, we're coming to you today from the greenhouse because it is cold outside. When we woke up this morning, it was one degree with the wind chill and it was, uh, I think, around 10 degrees with the regular temp and the high today is only 25. Now, I know to some of you that that is not very cold and you're probably wishing you would get up to 25, but for us here in the Ozarks, we're wimps. That is pretty darn cold. But here in the greenhouse, it's 70 degrees. So, look at me in a t-shirt while it's 25 degrees outside. Actually, I'm too warm just in one uh, long sleeve t-shirt. Today, we want to talk with you about some of the homestead purchases that we have made over the last, I don't know, five or seven years that we think are fantastic that we made and then some that aren't so good and we kind of maybe regret it a little bit and wish that we had put our money elsewhere. Yeah, there were some things that seemed like a good idea at the time or we at least we had the best of intentions when we spent the money um, but ended up really not being something that was very useful for us here on the homestead. So I think the best thing would be to go back and forth. Let's do a good one and a bad one. Okay. So I would say the first good purchase, the one that I have never regretted, is putting the wood stove in our house. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when we first moved onto our homestead, this house did not have a wood stove. Right. Uh, it only had propane heat. Um, we looked into how much it would cost to heat with propane, and it was crazy. I'm talking like $500 a month maybe in the winter on a good month. I, I don't know for sure, but it, it was going to be a lot of money. Uh, so we invested in a wood stove. I think we paid around $1,500 maybe for the wood stove, but my gosh, that was a great investment. That, that by far, it, it saved us so much money over the long run. Even though we are still not uh, harvesting all of our own firewood, we're still buying some every winter. We go through about three or four cords of wood per winter, depending on how cold of a winter it is. A cord of wood around here costs about $135, maybe $150 with delivery, but that's for the whole winter. So you're talking maybe $600 for the entire winter versus $500 a month. Um, it, it's by far a great savings, and that wood stove will last us forever. Uh, the brand that we have is a DS stove, which is um, a very efficient stove. It's an Amish-made stove. We absolutely love it. Uh, we're no way affiliated with them, but I do love that stove. Uh, but any of the newer wood stoves are so efficient. Um, and for our house, our house is about 1,400 square feet. Uh, our stove, I mean, sometimes it's too warm. Right. Even in the middle of winter, sometimes we end up opening windows uh, to cool the house off because the wood stove does too good of a job. The first purchase that we kind of regret and wish we would have just saved our money or spent it more wisely elsewhere is the wood chipper that we have. When we bought the wood chipper, we thought, man, this is going to be perfect. Anything we cut down, we can just chip it up and start this giant pile and then use it on our garden. Uh, but what it came down to is even though the chipper that we bought was a really nice chipper and we're not talking like just a cheap one it just didn't do what we needed it to do uh, we've got a ton of things that we cut down and honestly we could spend days and days feeding these branches through this chipper and really not have much to show for it uh, the chipper that we have it will take branches that are maybe an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half, and feed it through. But the end product with this chipper is like sawdust. And it just wasn't worth our time. Yeah, unless we spent many thousands of dollars on a really big like industrial, in industrial chipper, yeah. it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't amount to anything. I mean, we've literally spent sometimes an entire day out there running branches through this thing to end up with like two five gallon buckets full of wood chips. And it just, right. I mean, it just isn't worth our time. Uh, now what we do most of the time is just put things into a big pile and burn them and then use the wood ash in the garden. Right. Um, because it, it just, it, it just is worth, you know, our, our time is worth something and the wood chipper is not a time efficient tool. Right. So going back to something that was totally worth our money was our plucker, our chicken plucker. 
man, that thing has just worked like a workhorse. We've had it for six years? At least. Seven years? Right. We bought it when we still lived in Arizona. Yeah, that sucker will pluck three chickens in about 30 seconds and is amazing. Now, I'll tell you that the plucker is my workstation when we uh, process chickens and it is just amazing. Uh, it is definitely worth the money. You just got to keep it up, keep it clean, keep it working really well. And oh my gosh, I would never trade it for anything. No, if you're doing a lot of chickens every year, I mean, it is hands down a, a time saver. I mean, it, I mean, instead of, you know, maybe 10 minutes of chicken to hand pluck, it's like three chickens in 30 seconds. Right. I mean, it, it's absolutely amazing. Never regretted. Uh, and it wasn't super cheap. It wasn't. But I've never regretted spending the money on that. Because again, if you maintain it, keep it, you know, clean and, and indoors, uh, it'll, it'll last probably a lifetime. The next thing that I'm a little sad about spending the money on is the auger that I bought for my tractor. Um, now, there are a few times when the auger has come in handy, uh, but I wish I had known more about the ground here in the Ozarks before I spent the money on it. Um, we have a lot of rocks, and the auger that I have, even though I have a fairly big tractor, a 46 horsepower tractor, which is fairly big, um, the auger just doesn't do a very good job. I can usually get down 18 inches or so, and much below that, I just can't go much further with my auger because we have too many rocks. Um, so most of the time I end up hand digging holes for posts just because of that. I hand dig and then use like a big breaker bar to go through the rocks. Um, so there are, but there have been a few occasions where I've gotten the auger to go down further. And in those occasions, it, I've been glad that I have it, but for the most part, it just hasn't been a good investment here. So my thing with the auger is, it depends on where you live. If you live in a place where you have like sandy soil or even like gravelly type soil, uh, it would probably be good. But if you live in a place like we do, where there are a lot of bigger rocks, it, it's probably just not worth your time and, and money to spend on the auger. I think you could spend your money on a better tractor implement than the auger. Well, I think when we bought that auger, we overestimated the amount of projects that we would have to use it for. Right. You know, I think we thought we would use it to put in every fence post and every other kind of digging project. We did use it to uh, drill holes for our orchard, which was very helpful. Right. Um, but and for the greenhouse here. Right. But, but again, we were only able to get down about 18 inches, yeah. which really isn't far enough. The third fantastic investment that we made in our homestead, which we will never ever regret, is this greenhouse. Right. This has been a fantastic investment. We are so happy with it. And uh, the fact that we were able to use this on in so many different seasons for so many different projects, we're not just using it in the spring to grow uh, plant starts to use in our garden and to sell at the farmer's market. We're using it all year round for lots of different projects. Right, I mean, look at this beautiful lettuce that we have growing in here right now. Um, it, you know, to be able to eat fresh stuff all winter long is amazing. Not only that, but think about all of the projects that you've been able to do in here over the winter and over the fall and spring and things that really makes this so versatile. I mean, this December you had surgery, so it limited you a little bit this year, but this has been a fantastic warm uh, environment to do projects. You know, our garage isn't heated. Right. And so it's much colder than this greenhouse. So right. So this has been awesome for making the quail cages and anything else that you needed to do. Right. In the winter, we basically clear out all of the seed starting stuff. So I just have this as a big workshop. And during the day, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like today, I mean, look at 25 degrees outside. I'm out here in a t-shirt and honestly, I'm warm. If I were working on a project, I'd, I'd actually be really warm. So open the door. Right. Yeah. So it, it's this, this thing has been a godsend. Uh, we've, we've never regretted buying this kit. In fact, we're already talking about possibly extending it here behind us another 10 feet or so. Um, it's, it, it's invaluable. Yeah. If you guys have the money for a greenhouse, uh, we absolutely recommend that as an investment into your 
homestead. Well, and this was a kit that we were able to put up ourselves. And when it comes to prices of greenhouses and things, this was actually really, really affordable. Uh, and if you want to check it out, you can go to growersolution.com, uh, learn more about it, and uh, it is really worth the investment. You know, the only downside is that it gets cold at night. Right. Uh, we're looking for solutions on that. Uh, we did a video about that a while back. Uh, we're still investigating our options, but uh, during the day, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you have the wintertime blues, uh, which sometimes I get because, you know, you're just stuck inside more in the winter. The greenhouse is awesome because you can come outside, you feel like you're outside, uh, but and you get the nice sunshine, but that... Soak up some vitamin D. Right, but, the, but you know, you're still inside and it's nice and warm. Yeah. So the final thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, a purchase again that I wish uh, I don't really regret making the purchase of this item I just regret kind of the way I went about it and that is our tiller uh, I bought a used tiller uh, I thought I'd be saving some money I thought that I would um, you know kind of you know get away with some savings uh, in reality I ended up making a decision that just wasn't very good uh, even though it's a fairly powerful tiller Again, it kind of comes down to where you live, just like the auger. Here in the Ozarks, we have a lot of rocks. Uh, the tiller that I originally purchased was a, a forward rotating tiller, um, and that means that basically anytime you hit a rock or anything too hard, uh, the tiller like jumps forward and you about kill yourself. Um, I, that may even be why I had the hernia this last year, I don't know. It may be between that and the pigs. There's a lot. I do so many dumb things. Who knows? But I'm blaming at least partially on the tiller. So um, this past year, I did buy a, a new hand tiller. Uh, I ended up buying one that with, a rever that with the reverse rotating tines, which makes a big difference when you're working in all of these rocks. Um, but now we've expanded so much with our gardening and everything that we're growing. Uh, I'm actually starting to look for a tiller for my tractor. Um, and I kind of wish I would have just saved my money uh, from the beginning and bought the tractor. Actually, I wish I would have not bought the auger for the tractor. And I wish I would have just spent my money right away on the tiller for the tractor because I think it would have been a much better investment. Well, I think we had a disadvantage because we were new to this area. We had never lived here. Right. We didn't know anybody here. We didn't have friends or family. So we didn't really have anybody to talk to, to ask all of those questions. Yeah, so I guess if you buy a place in a, in a new place like we have now, and I wish I had done this is, you know, I've now met people at the farmer's market and neighbors, um, and they've told me what they have. And I wish I had kind of thought down that road before I made a purchase because I'm ended up buying more along the lines of what people who have been here a long time have. So we hope this got you guys thinking a little bit uh, about what may be good or what may not be good for you in your homestead. We hope that we've saved you maybe a little bit of time, a little bit of money, uh, but you know, everybody's growing conditions and everybody's homestead environment is gonna be a little bit different. But hey, we'd like to hear from you. What are some of the things that you have invested in that have been good but what also may have been bad or a mistake in the long run. We'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Yeah, let us know where you are in the country because other people may read the comments and you may be able to help save people in your own area some of the headaches that we've gone through, uh, but also help them in some ways as well. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Uh, if you know anyone who could benefit from this, please share it on your social media. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.